Thank you so much. I'm excited to welcome everyone to Venture Cafe. And as some of you may know, this is going to be our first recording of our podcast, um, which is called What's Brewing at VC John. And so we are incredibly excited, um, as Natalie mentioned, to um, welcome Dr. Lorena Marshall Blake. Um, um, I've known Lorena for a period of time, and every time I'm around her, um, I'm just amazed by the gems that she drops. Um, as a way of introduction, I'm Tracy Bralla. I'm um, Vice President of Ecosystem Development for the University City Science Center. And I'm also the founding executive director for Venture Cafe Philadelphia. Um, Venture Cafe's premise is really around connecting innovators to make things happen. And if I think about that premise, I can't think of a better connector in Philadelphia than uh, Lorena. Lorena is the president of the Independence Blue Cross Foundation and is truly a trailblazer uh, in terms of all of the work that she's done for the Philadelphia ecosystem. Uh, Lorena and I will be talking about bold innovation and we're gonna talk about um, what, um, what really makes, um, makes Lorena tick. Uh, so Lorena, without further ado, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey um, okay. since it's a really interesting and unique one. It, you know, it's funny when you start to reflect back, uh, but the th one thing that I, I have to say, even before I talk about my journey, and I think, Tracy, you'll probably share this with me, that none of us have gotten here by ourselves, okay? Um, there's this wonderful book that just came out in February that was called They Carried Us on Their Back, which has 95 uh, women of color from all over the region that they chronicled their journey. And I happen to be in the book as part of the journey. So I've been booked, needless to say. But um, it made me think about the fact that none of us have gotten here by ourselves. But when I think about my journey, um, I was chuckling to myself, I'm one of five children, okay? I'm the middle child. So you know that, okay? The middle child always feels neglected and unloved, okay? And tends to be the connector often. I pull everybody together. Uh, I was laughing. Part of the journey, I'm the connector. You said it, the collaborator and the convener. This is what we're going to do. And even as an adult, that has not changed one bit. Uh, grew up, I'm a hometown kid, grew up in Philadelphia. Uh, went to Philadelphia. I'm a a uh, proud, proud graduate of public school. So I went to a public schools here in Philadelphia, um, where again, when I think of, when you think of those people that mold and shape you, education was key and I still believe that it's key. And so my parents played a major role in that, the education. So quickly went to Overbrook High School, graduated, was on my way to Temple University. You could go anywhere and I could have gone to Temple. Long story short, um, because of, again, uh, finances and things like that. Dollars weren't there for the books. So I didn't go to college right away. But I think again, but I didn't give up the dream to go to college because I still now have my undergrad in human resources and I have my master's in um, government administration from the University of Pennsylvania. And then uh, along the way, uh, got a doctorate um, from Albright and just got a honorary, another honorary doctorate from Harcum College, okay? So there's more than one way to do it, to become a doctor, okay? So is there a doctor in the house? But, but again, when I think about the journey, um, I think about, again, all those people in my life. You'll, today I'll talk about, I, have great, I love quotes. One of my favorite uh, people that I quote, Michelle Obama, you know, she was, she's so fabulous. Uh, but she said, in your life, you need three friends. And when I think of the journey, this is all part of the journey. One friend who you aspire to be like, and I think we all have those people in front of us. I want to be like that person. And then secondly, uh, a person who walks beside you in the journey, and I'll call them your TP, your trash pickers, the ones that can get in your world. Uh, uh, can I get amen on that? You love them, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, and then the third friend is that one that you're always pulling behind you. So it's always so important to pull someone up behind you. We were just talking about earlier about the next generation, but making sure that you create a path for them. So, so that for me is part of my journey. And again, even in, in these settings where people think you are um, inferior, I mean, even part of the journey, I mean, there were people that challenged who I was, what I was. And, 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 and again, because I was, I, I, 
was a young whippersnapper, as I call them, not that anymore, but what I used to be. And I would challenge, I would challenge. I said, well, why is it that way? No, you need to stay in your place. So I've never known much about staying in my place, okay? So you know, so even with brothers and sisters, when you're always fighting for space, you, you can't always stay in your place. But again, the desire is always to be, what is it, to take it to the next step. Um, before I finally did go to college, I was, imagine this, a junior clerk typist. Um, and it, it was interesting, needless to say, but but that's what I did until I went back to school and finished my um, education. I started off at Philadelphia Gas Works, which is still there, okay? It was the largest municipally owned utility in the country. Went in there as the assistant to the public relations manager. That's when I found out what I really liked. I love people, okay? I'm fascinated by people. And in public relations, you meet all kinds of people. So if you don't like people, don't go in the PR, needless to say. So went in there um, and stayed there for a while uh, and then subsequently left and then went to INA, which is now called Sigma. Okay. So went and again, this time I went from public relations to marketing. So I'm building my skill set without even realizing that's what I'm doing. So it was called, we were called the Mod Squad, the Marketing Operation Division, okay? So, and I'm gonna date myself, it used to be a TV show called the Mod Squad, but we'll leave that alone. So went there and then went from marketing, was at INA, left INA, then went to a company called Godus Larson. So I sold cruise ships, believe it or not. And I was in the investor relations department, again, dealing with people. Uh, stayed there for a while and then moved out to Exton, Pennsylvania, to a company called the Arthur S. DeMoss Foundation, where I went along the way. Um, I got a degree in, um, in advertising. So I was doing advertising for, for the Arthur S. DeMoss Foundation with an ad agency called Young and Rubicon in New York. So, you know, developed my skill sets there. And then while I was there, and this is an important point, never burn bridges behind you because you never know when folks may call you up again. I got a call from uh, the Philadelphia Gas Works again. They said, we have this awesome position called assistant to the president. And we'd like you to at least come interview. I said, well, yeah. and I said, you know, hey, let's go try it and see. Long story short, ended up working for Philadelphia Gas Works as the assistant to the president. And what that meant was I did constituent services for Philadelphia Gas Works. So everybody that had a problem with the gas bill came to Lorena Marshall Blake. And then I worked along with the city council of Philadelphia. That's where I started the relationship building with all of the local politicos. So pretty much I know everybody. I know where all the bodies are buried. I'm teasing. No, but I'm, uh, yeah. You <laughs> but, know everybody. <laughs> yeah. So again, as a result of that, um, started to, uh, the, one of the, I'm a RB, a, not rhythm and blues, but relationship builder. So you build on those relationships, not knowing quite when you're gonna need that particular relationship. So got real involved in the political process, um, stayed at, um, <clears throat> excuse me, at Philadelphia Gas Works. And you know me, Trace, I'm the volunteer's volunteer, part of the journey. Uh, one of my mantra quote, I will always serve. That's just me, that's who I am. So, or better yet, I say I'm a mad woman. A uh, woman making a difference. So I, I'm, I served on many boards in the process of this journey. And as a result of my volunteerism, and I can't emphasize that enough, if you don't have the job you want, volunteer in an organization to use those skills to keep them honed so when you need them, they're sharp. Mm -hmm. So was on my way, was at uh, Philadelphia Gas Works, had, um, had gone back, was working there, and on the, as a result of my volunteerism, got an opportunity to be on the board of directors of Independence Blue Cross, okay? So I went on the board and I said, that was back in the day before the, you got paid to be on that board. But in any event, um, as a result of, of volunteering, working in different organizations, people got a chance to see my skill set, And it was in, in detail, um, what is it? If you give me a job to do, you do, it's done, okay? You got to do the work. Long story short, um, what happened was G. Fred DeBona, who is now deceased, Fred said, who is that woman? 
Okay, that's on our board. And, and, and we started up this friendship. He was head of the chamber. And then he said, look, I've got an, I've got an offer that I hope you won't refuse. Long story short, sat down with Fred. And as a result of that, uh, ended up, went from board of board member to being the vice president of government relations for Independence Blue Cross and served as their, um, I, I ran their political action committee, worked with all their legislators. Um, and, and again, I say, you always have to be ready. And if you don't know, ask somebody else who can help you along the way. So, so that happened, came inside and it is now, I still can't believe it, it is 30 years later that I've been in, I, I came as a child, okay. Okay, I was a little girl. So <laughs> let me clear that up. <laughs> but long story short, came in as the vice president of government relations. And then in 2011, here's the journey, being ready, where I called I got called into the principal's office. Now I have to say, I often stay in trouble. Um, I don't break rules, but I, I'm very flexible and I tend to, you know, massage them. And you know, Tracy, you with me? You with me? Okay. So long story short, um, uh, when got called into the principal's office and Joe Frick was sitting there, who was the president at that time, and Dan Hilferty was sitting there, who was the incoming president. And I said, okay, I'm sitting there. And they said, Lorena, I said, yes. And I had to go up to the 45th floor, which is where they were. So that really meant uh, I'm either going to get it. I'm not sure what's coming. It's either so, going to be really good or really bad. You know, well, it's going to be out, okay? So he said, they said to me, we like you to be the president of the Independence Blue Cross Foundation. And I sat there for a moment and I, inside I'm going like, yay, this is, this is the job. But of course I didn't say that. But, but I came out with a question to both of them. And I said, my thought, are you sure you have the right person? And you could have heard crickets. They were like, well, well, what does that mean? I said, well, let me tell you what it means. If you want someone to be the head of, and I had to build the foundation. If you right. want someone to head, be the head of the foundation and build it and um, just be a titular head, then I'm not the right person. Mm -hmm. If you want someone, when I look at the Independence Blue Cross Foundation, for me, there's, that's where the reverend comes in, because I was a reverend at that point. It's about ministry, but more importantly, it's about being the voice for those that don't have a voice. It's about advocating for those who are on the margins of life. So it's about, what is it? Making sure that they have a voice at the table, more importantly, that they are at the table. And again, we support like 50 um, clinics throughout the Philadelphia, was it Montgomery, Bucks, Delaware, and Chester and Philadelphia County. So that was the first thing I said. And then the second thing I said was, I don't know jack about running a foundation. And they said, oh, that's okay. <laughs> I said, okay. But that's what I mean about relationships. Because once I accepted the position, I then called Sharice Lilly. Many of you know Sharice Lilly, who was over at Comcast, and then Deborah Armburster, who was over at Wells Fargo. So I had, I'll call it sister friends that I could call and say, hey, this is what I've been asked to do. Can you assist? And, you know, it made me think of Madeline Albright, who says there's a special place in hell for women who won't help other women. So, you know, so again, they were there to help. So therefore, um, my journey is always making sure I go full circle to almost where I started, that I make sure that I, you know, that I pull someone else along the way. So that that's a short part of my journey. Okay. How's that? So is, would you say that forming the foundation and founding the foundation is like the boldest thing that you've done or would yeah. you have to find something else? I got a couple, of, you know, I, I had to think, what is some of the bold? And I think one of the, there are actually a couple of things because there, the, the foundation did not exist. But, and you know, that's a plus and maybe a, the plus was since no, it didn't exist. I got to, to, what is it? To develop it, to grow it, to, to you know, to have say and what went into it. So again, you know, th there were some stops and starts, but it took us a year to build. They And when they asked me to run the foundation, they gave me $10 million. So they gave me money to start it. And now the foundation is a $90 million foundation. So we will be 10 years old next year. 
So we're coming up on the 10th year. But so so again, it was bold because here's a kid from West Philly, and I'm just gonna keep it real that my parents, my mom went to third, went to 10th grade, and my father went to third grade. So although neither one graduated, their prayer was all their children would graduate, at least from high school. But out of the five, three of us went on to college and got our undergrads and our masters. So again, education is just as important today as it was then. We just have to figure out how to pay for it now so that people don't have this great debt. Now, the other bold, um, one of the things um, that, it thought, that I thought about that was kind of bold and I could have gotten fired. A couple of times I could have gotten fired, Trace. So um, I was at Philadelphia Gasworks and um, I was kind of the consistent thread under, oh, under four presidents because they came in and they rolled out. So I was kind of the one that said, look, this is the guy, this is what you need to do, blah, blah, blah. So this, the, the latest president came in, guy from Oklahoma, big guy, good old boy from Oklahoma, okie dokie, you know, um, you know, had the big breast belt, good guy. So we come in, I come into a meeting with him and I said, and, he, and I said, Jim, here are some things that, you know, we need to look at. So Jim looks at me, he says, okay, what are we going to do, little brown bunny, today? I said, okay. Yeah, close your mouth, Trace. So Flies are coming in. it's okay. So I kind of went, okay, now what am I going to do with this? And so, you know, and that's why I said, don't win the battle and lose the war. I came back and I said to Jim, I said, Jim. And I said it jokingly, but he got it. I said, how would you feel? How would you feel if I called you a fat white hunky? I could have got fired, but I didn't say it, you know, adversary. I said it just, and he paused. He said, you know what? You got a point. So from that point forward, and I think it was probably the first time someone had checked him on that, all right? But there, there are times when you have to stand up for you, you know? And, and even though I'm, I may have been a cute little brown bunny, you don't have any right to call me little brown bunny, okay? Because he was a white male, all right? So, you know, so, so that was one of the things when I thought about one of the boldest things that happened. So again, and, and he apologized, okay? So he also apologize. And like I said, and the other one was becoming the president. That was the other one of the Independence Blue Cross Foundation. So it was, uh, it, again, there was, I wasn't, let, let's put it this way. I knew I could, you know what, when you pause and look at your life and look at your journey and all the things that have happened along the way, I was prepared for the job. So I walked into it. I made my phone calls and the rest has been history. That we are an award-winning foundation. Um, when um, independence, the uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield Association, which has 36 Blue Cross plans, our foundation, which is only 10 years old, has far surpassed those that have been 20 and 30 years that have been there for a long time. Because I, I what I try to do, uh, as I say to my staff, um, and you talk about, um, I know you'll probably talk innovation. Okay, well, I, look, when I look at innovation, I say to people, they say, well, we're going to think outside the box. I say, no, I don't have a box. All right. So, so I don't limit that, you know, and when you think about innovate, it's a new look, it's a fresh look. And you know, what? it's a, um, you know, what? I may be afraid, but I'm walking toward it. Look to see what will come out of it, to see what the end will be, or more importantly, that it's always evolving. The foundation has tenets of collaboration. I think that's all part of innovation. You got to collaborate with some folks that know more. You don't know what you don't know till you sit down with some folks. Then we then engagement. You know uh, the the foundation. You have to engage people, or right? you have to get them as excited as you are about what it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then two, um, always in the midst of innovation too, to the best that you can, sustainability. Let's look at this new idea, but how do we, how is it? Um, and this is funny that I should think of it. Chewy, chewy, tootsie roll lasts a long time. So you last a long time, okay? Um, so you're always gonna be around. And you know, so again, you're talking about sustainability, you're talking about engagement, 
you're talking about innovation and you're talking about collaboration. And those are some, of, those are the tenets of the foundation, but really they're the tenets of Lorena Marshall Blake too. Cause I like to, what is it? When I think of myself, I see myself as a convener. Okay, I love bringing people together, especially people a, that don't like each other or figure they can't work with each other. So the convening um, uh, or better yet taking the same organizations, hey, let's get in the room. If it's really about the people that none, and I know you, you, everybody has a mission, but if it really is enhancing the lives of the people that we live, work and play and represent, we got to figure out a way to come together. So, so collaborating and then the innovation. Look, uh, we in the foundation did it uh, last year where we matched up to $50,000 for a new idea. No, oftentimes nonprofits get their heads in the, the sand and they get so busy, they don't get a chance to think outside the box. I said, look, I will match up the $50,000 for you if you can come up with a new idea and you don't have to do it by yourself. You can collaborate and bring other folks with you. Okay, um, and again, uh, the, the the engagement, getting people engaged, and then sustainability. I'm about not just that's the same thing with the foundation. I didn't want it just to be a but a blip on the radar screen. When Lorena Marshall Blake steps down, I'm working on leadership that's coming behind me, so the foundation continues to go on because it's not about me, but it's how do we we alleviate some of the issues, the social justice issues, the healthcare issues. Um, the, um, one of the big programs we have is our nursing program where we support, um, I had 30 undergraduate nurses virtually that were with me this summer in paid internships, okay? And then with that, we go from there, we do undergraduate scholarships in nursing, and then we do graduate scholarships. I have eight PhD students where I partnered. That's another piece, partnering with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. So because everything we do has to be within our footprint, but if I collaborate with Robert Wood Johnson, I get the national hit too. So again, it, it, it sets out of the box thinking and see who can we who can we work with to best take forward what it is that we're doing. Does that help? Oh, it's amazing. And um, one of the things, and you touched on it a little bit, and I'd love to hear your thoughts mm -hmm. um, because I think um, a lot of these pieces come together. So Venture Cafe's motto is innovation is for everyone. Right. And you talked a lot about um, collaboration. Yeah. How, how do we bring that to life? so that we really are enabling every single person in Philadelphia to think outside of the figurative box, to approach yeah. situations in a way where they're saying, this is new, this is different, I can do this, I'm empowered to do this. What does that look like? That's a good word. And, and, and that's, that. matter of fact, that's one of the tenets of the Independent Blue Cross, empowerment. OK, you've got to empower people. And that's when I say no idea is a bad idea. OK, and, and that you, when you convene people together, you have to be I call it. I like acronyms. So you're going to get them, Trace. A -L, <laughs> OK, that's an attentive listening. OK, where you people don't listen today before they've jumped ahead and they're telling you what they're doing. You, we and especially as we look at um, all the the social justice issues and all that are going on in our town that we have to we really do have to sit still and listen. All right. Um, and and not hear what we want to hear, but hear what we need to hear. OK. And it's having those. What is it becoming comfortable? with those uncomfortable, what is it, conversations, mm -hmm. with those uncomfortable conversations. So again, when, when you talk about innovation and with it being bold, it means it's not the status quo. You know, no, uh, just because it's all, in other words, I had written down a note for something else earlier today. Um, one thing that we know is constant is change. Change mm -hmm. is constant. So you have to take those old things and call them just what they are old things as you move toward the new things. And, mm -hmm. and I think, again, if you want to bring, I believe, if you want, this is Lorena, if you want our millennials and, and our young people to come along with you, you've got to be open to doing it a different way. Okay. Just because I walk down that street every day doesn't mean I have to go that way, but mm -hmm. also be ready to, um, Hey, what I call it, shake it up. Cause it may, look, it may knock you right off your base, but it's like, okay. Let me take a deep breath and, and 
see where we go with this. Because many times, a new ideas, and it may be not that idea for the moment. It may be a not yet, but it does, delay does not mean denial. It just may mean not right now as we line up things. I think even with the foundation, I had to line up the things that I needed to do so that they aligned, especially when you're in a big company like Independence Blue Cross. Whatever I did, I had to make sure to the degree that was possible that it aligned with the mission of Independence Blue Cross, okay? But in that same vein, there is that veil between independence and the foundation because you, because it's a 501c3, we have to be careful, the foundation, that we don't, what is it? It's not used, it, it cannot be used for marketing purposes, mm -hmm. okay? It's straight philanthropy, straight fill, it's all the way live, okay? So they can write me, well, write me off, but they do. They write me off, they write my department off, they write my, um, all my uh, team members off. You know, you know, we're one of the, we're tax deduction. OK, but again, I get to do creative things and, and again, get um, well, they tease me. I have a pink hat on the day. I said she wears a white hat. OK, OK, but but we're the one that kind of rides in and tries to make a difference in the community for independence, although there's still the corporate side, which is different. Corporation does sponsorships. We do programs. We do programs in the under the foundation. Mm -hmm. That's and I think, it, and again, when you see, and every time you see me, I have a hat on. So in order to run the foundation and do all the other things, I need to wear many hats, okay? I can't just wear one hat. And I always often say, you have to be ready to be ready because I, Tracy, I don't have all the answers. I really don't. But I know a lot of smart people that do, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'll be the first one to admit, I don't know the answer to that. I don't mm -hmm. know the answer to that. Mm -mm. No, mm -mm. So I want to encourage folks, um, if you would like to ask a question, put it in the chat and I can either read it or call on you. Um, I could spend all day. I've got millions of questions for Lorena, but I also want to make sure that you get a chance to get your voices heard. Um, in the meantime, one of my favorite questions um, oh, is, um, Lorena, what is your superpower? You're going to say that. It was so fun. You know what? My superpower is <laughs> R&B. Okay, and like I said, it's not rhythm, rhythm and blues, okay? Um, it is really um, not, um, well, and I wrote it down on purpose. I said, Reen, you're gonna make, she's gonna ask you that question. So you better put down what your real superpower is, okay? I got a lot of superpower. Oh, here it is. My real superpower is not rhythm and blues. It's R&B. It's actually relationship building. That's my real superpower, building relationships. Or the other superpower is I am an RO. I like ours. I am a radical optimist. No matter how, Tracy, you and I could be out on the boat, the holes in the boat, we had no oars. And I would say, Tracy, we're gonna get there. And I think, again, part of that, it's all about one of my favorite, favorite words is the word, um, if I talk about superpower, attitude. And there are three things that I always use all the time. One, if it's, it, it's crucial, you're at, whether it's your professional, your personal, your religious, anything you do, your attitude is crucial. And it could be a good one or a bad one, or it could be nothing at all. And then secondly, the best part about it, it's a choice. So nobody makes that choice but you. You decide what it's going to be. And then the third one is, it, it's crucial, it's a choice. And often, if I said, Tracy, I need you to laugh, Natalie, I need you to laugh. If it's the right one, it's contagious. People mm -hmm. want to be around you, all right? People want to be around positive people. I mean, it doesn't mean that I'm Pollyannish and I'm not being a realist. I mean, I keep it real, but I also try to keep it positive and say, look, we, we, we can get through this and, and we can work it out. Somebody's got to say that. I mean, when we look at the pandemic and we look at COVID-19, I don't discount that it's here. But when I look at many of the things that have come out, families have come together, okay? Um, people are, are, are doing things. They, they've, had to be, they've had to be innovative, okay? Mm -hmm. I've got an 80-year-old woman from church doing Zumba, okay? I didn't think she, but, but that's what I mean, okay? In the chair. But, but again, um, it, it causes us, 
I believe situations like this to go outside the, go back to your word, to be bold and innovative. So there's no wrong way to do it. Okay. Um, I mean, there's the right way, the wrong way and no way. Okay. Or you just sit there and say, well, uh, I'm done. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm just not going to do that. Mm -mm. So um, Lorena, I think uh, RB is definitely um, an absolute um, great way and great superpower of yours. If I think of one of the first times I've ever seen you speak in public was last year at the Forum for Executive Women's Leadership Breakfast. Yes. And Lorena was um, speaking in front of 1,000, 1,200 women in the Crystal Tea Room, a lovely, lovely event. And you honestly created a relationship with every single individual in there. Yes. And that's a superpower. Um, that's it. You know, yes. Lorena knew her audience, and um, it was the first time I've ever heard anyone talk about Philadelphia as the city of brotherly love and sisterly infection. And so if you think about it, I just said 1,200 women in a room introducing the concept of sisterly affection. We were all like, this woman then, is it. We are all in. Um, so and, truly a superpower. And remember, Tracy, when I said sisterly affection, but sisterly effectiveness. See, and affection is wonderful because we love, but we're also, women are effective. You want to get the job done, ask the woman to do it. <laughs> ask and it gets done. Okay, it gets done. Okay, no, somebody's hand is up. I think I thought I saw somebody. I thought they said somebody's hand was up. Okay, maybe I did it. Okay. Okay. William? Oh, it looks like it's Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're on. We can't hear you, William. Are you on mute? Oh, you can type it in. Okay. Great. Okay. Into, great. All right. I'll ask another question in the meantime. Um. Okay. So. You, you were talking um, a little bit about there being opportunities um, that have been presented because of the pandemic. And I completely agree. I, yeah. you know, multiple months in a row, I had dinner every single night with my two college age children and my husband. And that's never happened. I've been a working. Well, that's it. We've never had that opportunity. Exactly. If you think about where we are as a society and all of the convergence of, you know, the murder of George Floyd, yes. um, coupled with COVID, how do we think about innovation? Um, how do we think about um, racial equity? And what does that convergence look like in your mind? You know, I, I think there are a couple of things as I look at it. First thing is to own it and acknowledge that it's there. OK, uh, I don't think it's one of those things that we can just ignore. You know what? I just I said to someone recently, I said, this is not a moment. This is a movement. And this is a time if there ever was an op opportunity to look at systemic racism and look at those inequities that have not leveled the playing field and everybody has not been allowed to play. Now is the time to do it whether you're a woman, whether you're African-American, regardless, okay, now is the time to do this. And I think people have to be honest and it goes back to being comfortable with being, with being uncomfortable because I think there's some conversations that need to be had, all right? There are some things that have been done that have, that have not been right, okay? Um, it's time to, I call it, I heard someone else say this, so I'll, I'll, it, it's time, for, again, going back to listen Okay, here, you know, listen, learn, and then act. Because at Independence, we've been doing these listening sessions where we, we're talking about those things that have affected the African-American community and why it's the way. And there are some things that have come out that have been very, what is it, uncomfortable. And even with all the great stuff we do, we still, we still could do more. And we all agree to that. Okay, would you, what, okay, I saw another one pop up. You'll give me that later. But again, um, I think uh, as um, organizations, and I have to pick, I'll use independence. Our CEO, Dan Hilferty, has been real clear. It, we're, we're, we haven't done everything right, but we're gonna do everything we can to make sure that it, there is equity across the system. We have ERG groups, uh, associate, um, um, engagement groups that whether you're the uh, men's multicultural, the women of independence, the Asian and Pacific, LGBTQ, disabled, and again, taking all those groups and really listening 
to what their concerns are. And with this whole social just social justice is about equity for all. It doesn't mean that you are any less than than I am, okay? And the same opportunities that that you get, I need to be able to get too, okay? Um, and and it's got to be also. And don't do me a favor. You can base it on merit because in many cases. And, and, and I have to look at my own career. I've had the, the credentials, I've had the experience and the ability to do it and I was passed over, mm -hmm. all right? And, and, and I was passed over for no other reason other than I was a woman, let me be clear, but I was also an African-American. But, you know, but I always say this, don't get mad, get even, okay? Uh, so, so again, you, you don't, well, you have to strategize. I, I think this didn't happen overnight. When we look at the whole social injustice, especially whether it's African-American, it's Asian, it's women, these things didn't happen overnight. So they're not going to change overnight. But I think you have to be deliberate. You got to have a strategy. You got to have a plan and an effort. And you have to have those goalposts that you look at, have we made any, have we moved the thermometer? Have we made any movement? Um, I'm on the mayor's commission for transformation and reconciliation for the city. And you know, you've got close to, gosh, I, I almost 50 people on this from business, from community-based organizations. You gotta get everybody together as you work on this because no one of us has all the answers, but I believe with us working together, we're gonna come up with, for lack of a better word, I'm gonna say cake, all right? But it, um, but your first thing is to own it and acknowledge it. And again, um, if you wanna be helpful, um, or I'll call it allyship, or how do we become an ally? And, and, and I'm gonna be brutally honest and frank, and many of my white friends have said, well, Lorena, what, I just didn't know. Okay, fine, now you know. So mm -hmm. here, okay, so you can't say you don't know. Now, you know, and, and again, you know, that's what, you know what, what's done is done, but how do we go forward? You know, how do we change the, the, uh, the how, how do we change as we go forward? How do we change um, our practices, our policies? I mean, we're taking it independence, a whole magnifying glass over the whole organization. And you see where Dan Hilferty is stepping down. Dan's retiring at the end of the year. And our new president is an African-American male. And you know, it's, and that is a bold step, but Greg Devins is qualified. See, that's the part. He, I mean, his credentials are stellar. And so I, I think if we ever could get to that point where people really, it's not based on the color of their skin, but on their ability to do the job. Can you do the job? And, and then, you know, and then be able to move forward. But again, it hasn't always been that way, you know, but, but it doesn't have to stay that way. Right. Absolutely. Okay. All right. William K. had um, a question. And yes, William. Mm -hmm. uh, can you hear me right now? I'm testing. Sure can. I can hear you, William. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. I, had, I had a few questions, but I just, the first one was, um, yes. would you say that you've always been good with dealing with people or was it something that you like had to learn throughout the years? You know what? You have to learn it. Okay. In other words, there've been times when I've stomped my feet and I got mad. Okay. And as a result of that, nothing came out of it. It's like, nobody paid attention and they, they, and guess what? And I, and so, so see again, You've got to, you heard me just say a minute ago, don't get mad, get even, all right? Mm -hmm. And even means, let me come up with my strategy. And one of the things that I often do, um, I'll, I'll say it, wait, I, I won't say it, I backdoor it, so I orchestrate it, all right? So I get together those folks, often they, that have what been my greatest, um, what is it? They have not been my advocates, have not been on my side, all right? And I start to win them over in different ways. I get to find out, it's almost like, and you, you're too young to probably know this song, but I'm gonna use it, I'm not gonna sing, but it's called getting to know you, getting to know all about you. When I'm with you, getting to know what to say. Haven't you noticed suddenly I'm bright and breezy because of all the wonderful things I'm getting to know about you day by day. See, you have to start, I, like I said earlier, I study people. And that's getting to know their triggers. And with my own boss, my boss, I have a senior VP I report to, I call it managing up. I know what his triggers are. I know those things 
th those words, those conversations. Um, I may come in and say, Steve, how are you today? How's your family? You know, what's going on? Blah, 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 blah. Then, oh, by the way, there was this um, item I was looking at and I was wondering, um, had you thought about it or have you considered it? So sometimes you got to ease your way in then you and then you come in with the hammer. Of course, I didn't say it quite like that. But but again, orchestrate before you have a you, especially when you're going to have a hard conversation with somebody, plan the conversation, make up your notes so that you stay on point and stay on task. So, you know, when I go in here, this is what my goal is. OK, and I mean, you don't have to be like a robot. OK, but again, have an idea, especially when you're dealing with senior people, because usually they don't have a lot of time. So you want to get in. This is, this is what, get in and here's a conversation. Or you have a person that's your sponsor that will talk William up. Oh, by the way, have you met William? Do you know what he worked on? Do you know what he did? So you got to have that person that's your advocate, that advocates on your best behalf all the time too. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, Thank what's your other one? You had something else, uh, William. I mean, dang, you kind of answered them all kind of, but Great. like- Okay. You know, it was just more so long story short, like it was a sure. collection of questions that all were kind of based on how do people, okay, okay, let me just get direct. I got a group of friends and we cool amongst each other, but it's funny sometimes I'll see like when perhaps we go out and, and meet other people is very, uh, like it's hard sometimes. How do you like break perhaps for a better, lack of better words, like break cultural barriers? I don't know, Not it's not really that deep, but like sometimes, right. you know, we might meet a meet a guy or, or whoever, a group of people, and they don't know how to perhaps maybe interact you know with us. We don't know how to interact with them. Like, is there I, any like, tactics that you use to like, me, you know, I don't know. I beat them up. I'm teasing. Okay. <laughs> let me tell you what you do. What And especially when you get, the first thing I'm going to say is be your authentic self. Right. Be who you are. Right. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. All right, go ahead. What were you going to say? Because go ahead. No, okay. yeah, right. you you are one hundred percent correct. But it's is is it different? People are different. One like when one of my friends, perhaps like let's say if if he was his authentic self, it oh, perhaps may 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 rub some people the wrong way, or maybe they might you know want to get away from him because they don't understand. They don't understand right. where he well, comes from, how he thinks like this. All right, let me ask you this: in that he's your friend, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, did you hear my comment in earlier that you need to have three? Good friends. Yeah, what One, is the trash picker? What is that? Oh yeah. Oh, the trash picker. I'm giving I'm gonna answer that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first one is that person that you want to aspire to be like. So William, there's somebody that you admire that you mm -hmm. want to be like. Okay. The second one is that person who walks alongside you and they're the trash picker. There now, this friend that acts out, that doesn't always do what he's supposed to do, you have to be able to say. Hey, bro, this is what happens when you do this. Okay. This is when, thanks, Tracy. This is what you need to think. When you do this, you, you know what? Um, I, I'll give you a quick example. I had two executive assistants. One was from London and she was an African American female. All right. My other executive assistant was Italian and she was from South Philly. Yeah. Okay. So the cultures were, and one was African-American and one was Caucasian. And they, all they did was this all the time. So finally, I said, enough is enough. I brought them both in my office. I said, now look, when I said, okay, I said, no, that not Tracy, it was Lorraine, Lorraine and Mary Louise. I said, and Lorraine said, Mary Louise, when you do this, this is how you make me feel. And and Mary Louise, she had no idea that that's what she was doing. Then likewise, Lorraine said, uh, Mary Louise said, and Lorraine, when you do this, you make me feel like this. So again, it's getting people to sit still. And even though he, he is who he is in an effort, if you guys are gonna roll together and work together and climb together and do things together, you have to be able to also be brutally frank and honest with each other and say, hey, you know, depending on who, and again, you, I say be your authentic self, but you also have to acknowledge who you're with, okay? The culture that you're in, the, the, the people that you're dealing with, 
Okay. So again, there's some things that you just thought, well, I always want to feel out the crowd when I go in. I, I said, okay, let, but that's why I always listen first and see what the conversation is and what's going on. And then I decide when and where I enter, if I'm even going to enter that conversation. But I said, if he is your friend, then you, you and, and again, if you guys go in with a specific goal, have the conversation before you go. Okay, hey, you know, this is what we, we, not William, this is what we want to do. So this is how we're going to go. Or William, I'm going to say this to you. You may have to go solo. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, no, I don't know. I'm just you giving you some options, right, okay? Right, right, but like right, I said, right, but, right. but and you know, he may not even realize it. Does he no, realize but you know, it? Some advice, I didn't even mean to cut you off. Some no, baby, it's I, okay. I did like... um. It, it, it sounds super like like kindergarten, but probably probably just sitting down, actually just explaining like when you do certain stuff, perhaps, I mean, hopefully that could, that's probably like the last straw, right? Just sit down and just tell somebody directly what their actions, the effect it has on your mood. Because sometimes we make assumptions, right? Like, I don't know, sometimes, you know. Why he does that, okay? Huh? He may do it as a defense mechanism. You know what? You never know, what is it? You think we know people and there may be those things that we don't know. It may be a reason why he does that. Right. I won't right, say right, he's right, insecure. Right. Well, we never perhaps sat down and perhaps yeah. spoke on it because I'm thinking one thing and he's probably thinking another thing. And I'm thinking he's thinking like I'm thinking, but really he's not. So well, and you know what? Oftentimes men, uh, women talk. We talk to each other. Okay, right, Trace? We we will get guys don't typically do that. Okay, yeah, y'all are warm, fuzzy. And look, can we, man, can we really talk about? It? But no, you have to, and especially if it affects your career. You need to. So, mm -hmm. Raina, tonight's about, um, and this kind of piggy dovetails into that conversation tonight, um, has um, been a big focus on university innovation. And so we've had a lot of entrepreneurs that have been pitching just amazing pitches of their ideas. Um, what advice would you give to your 20 year old self? Okay, um, and especially yes, when it comes to your old, your old self. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. No, even when I thought about being entrepreneurs and, and being in the university, I, I actually thought about it. And I said, again, and, and a lot of it, what's old, what's new is still old and what's old is new. So again, meaning it's important that um, you, what is it? that you be around other entrepreneurs or, or again, attend presentations. I heard you say, talking about presentations, get into those business competitions, okay? At 20, I, I, I don't think I was, I was, believe it or not, I was once shy. I'm not shy now, okay? I was shy, okay? But again, take a risk and take a chance. Even if you don't win, just do it, okay? Um, again, participate. Whenever you get an opportunity, someone asks you, well, hey, can you you know, participate in this particular event? And even when you don't have all the facts, invariably, there's somebody else that knows and somebody else who has gone there that can give you some guidance and all. Again, um, join a club. Look, I'm an Alpha Kappa Alpha woman, which is the largest African-American woman um, in, um, a women's organization in the country, okay? So so that's an organization where I can network, okay? So that's another piece that's important. So we can network with those or join those societies that are what? Relevant to what you wanna be. If it's human resources, it's sure, okay? So, you know, but starting to do that. Um, again, how do you, I'm all, I go back to being connector, <laughs> convener, collaborator okay always looking for those opportunities to collaborate um what if i was younger what would i have done if i knew what i knew now okay that's always the way okay is that i would be i would be bolder okay because i really was shy um and and again i didn't have and i gotta call it what it was i didn't have at 20 i didn't have role models like i have now and for me now it, it is it, it's paramount that I be a role model, that I be an example, that I be a resource, that I lay the what the bridge, what is it? Sturdy bridge, whether black bridges are just a sturdy bridge that people can get across. Um, my, um, one of my other um, great, uh, another saying that uh, by Dr. Janetta Cole, who was formerly the president of Spelman College, used to say that you know, leadership is about believing 100% in yourself 
but believing 200% in the people you're asking to follow you. So you have to make sure that they, you know what I mean? That they have what they need, okay? So, so that, because oftentimes, if I look at independence, I'm out there, uh, what is it, the clarion caller talking about the foundation, doing all, talking about all the wonderful things that we do. You see me on PSAs, you see me doing things for essential workers, the whole nine yards. And then, but then there's my staff that's back in the office that's doing the work. Okay, that's doing the work. Uh, and that's not saying what I'm doing is not work. But again, they're implementing those things that I've asked them to do. So again, I, I go back to that you have to do, the, you, you gotta be the one to do the work, okay? Um, but, it, um, but it's always mm, just being excited about what you're doing. If you don't like your job, let me say something. You don't like your job, do something else because life is too short to be doing something you don't wanna do. Now, granted, doesn't mean you might not get detours because you may, because sometimes you may have to step back in order to go forward. But don't uh, put yourself in a situation where I hate this job. I absolutely, what's it? It's like I'm, I'm dating myself again, like Grumpy Smurf. I hate this stuff, okay? <laughs> But but that's what I mean, it, because it it because life is too short. And you look at and like I said, and then you have a pandemic. Oh, then what? All right. No. Mm -mm. So um, this is amazing. And I hate for it to end. Um, I do not, already? Not done. We have one more question. One more question. Oh, one more question. One more question. Um, and it's what's your hope? for Philadelphia and the region. Oh, God. Gosh, You're God. so connected. You've, you've seen yes. so much. You've you know, been such an influencer of who we are today. How do we, what's your hope for the future? Oh, there, there are a couple of things. And, and even with, well, the first thing for me uh, is, is that we would just learn to love each other and respect each other. Um, and even we can agree to disagree Okay, but, but so that's that's one of the first at the heart of everything I do is love. Okay, um, and and more importantly that um, that it's not always about me. It's not always my way. Okay, it's not my way, the right way, and the highway. But it's how to, and it's not an I, but it's a we. That's the first thing that we would just love each other and care about each other. Okay. The second thing, as I jokingly say, I said that we would be the sis again. The city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, but what, there would be opportunity. Matter of fact, I wrote down something um, on the top of my sheet. I said, "One of the I want to be one of those people who see opportunities where others see obstacles." I'm not looking for closed doors, so we need to open the doors so that people can get in. Okay, we need to what is it? Lay the path so that people can what is it? Dream the boldest dream. So if that's your dream. How do we get you there? And, and that there should be people in place, whether they're mentors, um, um, whether they're sponsors, whether they're advocates, they're gonna help you get there. Um, I think again, um, the crime, and when I look at the crime in our city, um, and, I, and, and I'm not saying any particular group or, or hurting people hurt people, people are hurting. I mean, you've got the, one of the biggest issues in our town is food insecurity. On every Monday, what's it? Every Monday and Friday, I'm at church at 5600 West Rod Avenue, giving out food. That's that it, people know we're going to be there, and that, and again because of the unemployment, um, and like I said, I, know what I call it? no judgment zone because you know what? It could be you and it could be me. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, the, the word of God said, "There go I, but by the grace of God, it could be any one of us." So that's why we really do have to help each other. You know, we really do. If you can, you know, in other words, not here. I, I just taught this the other day. Who is my neighbor? Everybody's my neighbor. Okay. Um, it's, or, or as, as Reverend Audrey Bronson would say, Lottie Dottie and everybody. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So everybody's my neighbor. You know, William, I just met you, but you're my neighbor. You know, what can I do to be helpful? It's always, there you go, being ready, willing, available. That's the other part. You know, people just need to be available. One thing about being in this pandemic, you've got some extra time in there 
where you can reflect or you can do some other things that you've always wanted to do, all right? So so again, a city of, of real brotherly love and sexually affection and effectiveness, a, a city where that there, it is equity, what do we call it? Diversity and inclusion and equity. So everybody gets an opportunity, okay? No matter what zip code they may come from. That should have nothing to do with the ability for your opportunity to progress and to do some other things. To be able to look at a little child, and I'll never forget it, where I said to her, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And to wit, her response was, I don't know if I will grow up. And that was because of all that was going on, the environment that she was in and around. No child should have, have to not have a dream uh, or to say, this is what I want to be when I grow up. Okay. Um, so we have to get the systems in place. We have to get, and is it convenient? No. I mean, Trace, you talked about your kids. And again, we got to be available. We got to be there for them. And, and they, we may not always like what they have to say or even what they do. Amen. But they're still our kids. They're still our kids. And so we as a community, um, we have to embrace those kids that don't have anybody that, that gives a darn about them, okay? We have to embrace those young men and young women that are left by the wayside because nobody gave them an opportunity. Um, we have to become the vehicle. We have to become the bridge. We have to become the road. Um, we have to be the interveners um, and, and really just to make a difference. And really, what is it? Um, and, I, and again, I have a book and on the title of the book is I Dream a World. And I really do dream a world where there really is equity and everybody gets an opportunity and everybody is treated fairly, fairly, okay? Marina, thank you so much. Um, oh, I promised you were gonna drop some gems and you dropped hundreds more gems than I even expected. Um, every week at Venture Cafe, I have an opportunity um, to mm -hmm. write a newsletter and yeah. there were probably 50 different newsletters that um, my brain oh. was going off in tangents. So you for blessing us with your welcome. Thank and you. We will uh, be in touch soon. Yes. Well, just hey, I'm a resource. If you ever need me, I'm here. Okay. All right. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you.